Alrighty, so uh, first part of this chapter, we are going to be writing congruent statements. And all of that, what that details. We state that two shapes are congruent when all of their sides and angles have corresponding sides and angles that are equal. Just a little side note, we state that uh, shapes are similar if only their angles are equal. Okay, so a big difference between being two shapes being congruent and two shapes being similar. Okay, congruent, all of their sides and angles have to match up for their, them to be similar. Okay, just their angle, angles have to match up. Okay, and we'll mostly focus on triangle congruency. There are four types we're going to focus on. There's five total, but we're really just going to focus on four of them. Okay, first one being side, side, side. Okay, we abbreviate it by saying SSS. Okay, so basically if you have two triangles where all of their sides uh, have a corresponding side that matches up, so three and three, four and four, five and five, okay, all three sides match up. Okay, then we know those two triangles are congruent.
Next one, side, angle side. Okay, something like this. All right, where we have two side lengths of five that match up, two side lengths of 10 that match up, but then the angle in between those sides also has to match up. So in this case, they're both 30 degrees. Okay, so that works out as well. Next one, <clears throat> angle side angle. Okay, where you have two sets of angles and the side between them. Okay, so the example over on the right, uh, two angles of 30 degrees that match up, two angles of 60 degrees that match up. Okay, and then notice that the side of six is between both of those angles. Right. And the last one is uh, angle, angle side. There we have two sets of angles and any third side. Okay. You'll see this shape kind of used a lot for triangle congruency, but kind of get the idea. 
two angles of 25 degrees match up, two angles of 90 degrees match up. Okay, and then you have that third, the third thing you need is that side of 10. Okay, and that side does not fall in between the two angles. All right, then, so I'll just make a side note. Angle, 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 and angle side side are not forms of congruency. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to translate this into being able to write congruent statements. All right, so you'll see something that looks like this. Okay, we use those little tick marks on each side, okay, to indicate that the sides are equal. Right, so our congruent straight statement that we would write is that we would write that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Okay, so we just use a triangle symbol like that, okay, to state that it's a triangle. Okay, the congruent symbol is an equal sign with a little squiggly line on top like that. Okay. And the biggest issue that people have is that they screw this part up, but note that the order in which we write these matters. And we'll explain here in just a second.
So when I say order matters, okay, if A is the first letter, then it has to match up with D. So by saying triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, we're stating that angle A is equal to angle D. And that the second letter has to match up with the second so angle B has to be equal to angle E, and angle C has to be equal to angle F. Okay, that little symbol just means angle. Okay, not only do the angles match up, but the side lengths have to match up. Okay, so AB has to be equal. So side AB, essentially the first two letters have to match up with the second two letters. So AB has to equal side DE. Again, line on top means side length. Uh, could use the second two letters. So BC, side BC has to be equal to side EF. And then AC has to equal side DF as well. So usually when they ask you, it'll look something like this, where they ask for the statement, okay, where we'd write triangle ABC is congruent. It's triangle DEF. Okay, and our reasoning in this case would be side, side, side congruency. So we would just write whichever of those four we would use. Okay, with the congruent sign afterwards. Okay, uh, coming back to our side lengths, because that's kind of what we're using. Okay, AB is congruent to DE, because they both have the one tick mark. Okay, BC and EF are also congruent because they have the two tick marks and AC and DF have the three tick marks. Okay, so we know that we kind of wrote it correctly. Okay, so we take a look at the triangle. We got to identify if we have enough information to determine if they are congruent. In this case, we have two sets of corresponding angles that are congruent and the side in between them. Okay, so we can state that triangle DOG is congruent to triangle. And again, we got to match everything up. So which angle matches up with D on the second one? 
Well, that would be C. Okay, and then it goes D O. So the O is the angle without any markings. So we'd have to use the mark the angle over here without any markings. In this case, would be A, and then D O G. Okay, so uh, G right there matches up with T. So statement would be triangle D O G is congruent with triangle C A T. And our reasoning would be angle side angle congruency. Okay, try this one uh, on your own here. All right, so should have gotten one of these six. Okay, it all depends on what order you went in. Okay, if you, you could have started up top and just gone Y, X, Z. You could have gone Y, Z, X, X, Y, Z, X, Z, Y. ZXY, ZYX, okay? So it just kind of depends on where you started. Normally what you'll see is like, they'll give you the first three, they'll be like, finish the congruent statement, okay? And then you'd have to just match everything up. Okay, if not, okay, then there's kind of a wide range of options, six usually with triangles, okay? However, it all should have fallen on angle, angle side as the, uh, reasoning. There's no real, no real wiggle room there.